Welcome back to the channel guys. Today's episode is going to be a simple one. We're just going to get the car ready for the track. So we've got some new pads, new discs and some lower end springs to fit. That's pretty much the basics I'm going to do before we go hit the track day. And then I can know when I'm out on the track if I need to upgrade anything else like a rear anti barrel bar, etc. So start with the basics and then I can improve as I go on and see what I need to do as and when I need to do it. So I've got some new discs and I've got some new yellow stuff pads, uh, EBC pads. So we're going to get those fitted and hopefully uh, they'll work better on the track than sort of the OE stuff. So um, I'll do some recording of this stuff as well. But also in the next episode, I'm going to be building the exhaust on the turbo all the way back to the rear. All custom, all three inch, all the way back to the rear. So I'll document as much as that build as I can. Because uh, I know you guys wanted to see a bit more of the exhaust uh, last time around. So I'll make sure I do that this time around. So I have myself some uh, EBC yellow stuff pads here. Uh, I went with the yellow stuff pads because they're road legal uh, and they're a mix of fast road and track compound. So they handle the temperature that needed for the track so they won't fade, etc. For the brake discs, I went with a simple old drilled, drilled rotors. So drilled all the way through, not dimpled. Uh, so drilled both sides as well, front and back. So that should help with the cooling. Obviously brand new discs, they're extremely heavy. Uh, so with the drilled ones, um, you do need to be careful not to stop the car um, without cooling the discs down properly because they will crack in between the, the drilled bits. So a little bit extra care needed, but very good for ventilation. So I managed to get the uh, disc off, Harry got that off nicely. It was just a T30 Torx bit for the Torx, the, was it the Torx nut? Then it was two 21 mil nuts for the carrier and then the uh, seven mil Allen key for the uh, carrier, the caliper. So very simple job to do. You're just cleaning up the face now and we'll get the new disc on. What are these, three? Three, four, five. It's a bolt, mate. Is it? It's a screw. Yeah, you call it a nut. <laughs> so they just get those two pins tightened up and then that's that break done. Oh yeah, we need to make sure we put the spring back in as well, which is going to be an absolute f***ing nightmare, I'll tell you that. So here's the uh, original spring that we took out and here's the Apex one. They seem similar in size, but these have got tighter coils that so should reduce the height and the uh, handling a little bit. So I'm gonna get these on now. All I have to do is take the, the nut off the top, the drop link, and it sort of folds down. So I'm gonna get these on there now and then show you what it looks like afterwards. All right guys, so that's this side done. I've already done the other side as well. I had a problem with the drive shaft itself from this side that attaches to the gearbox it actually came out of the coupler. So I have to disassemble this <laughs> side of the drive shaft, take the ball bearings out and uh, reseat everything just so I could uh, get the hub out and the suspension arm out. So I managed to basically slide it over the arch here and then put the spring on top and slide it back. But in doing so, pulled out the drive shaft um, ball bearings from that side. So extra faff and it's taking about five times longer than it should do, but they're all in there now. These Apex springs, I think they're 30 mil lowering springs. And then I've got my new discs here with the yellow stuff pads all looking beautiful so i've done the other side i just need to do the backs now and then uh, that should be the suspension job done 
And okay guys, there's the front brakes and suspension done. We're gonna... I'm actually gonna take a break for now. Uh, I haven't done the rears. The rears do sit a little bit lower anyway um, than the, the front did, so I'm gonna leave the rears just because the bolts are a bit too rusty. Uh, I need to get a car a bit higher up, so I'll get on the wrap and get them changed while it's up in the air. So I've done the fronts, done the brakes, so I'm gonna go test them out and bread them in now. There's a specific procedure you need to bed the brakes in for track use, so I've got the list of what I need to do. It's basically a load of like heat cycles, etc. So I'm gonna go and do that now, and uh, hopefully, yeah, the brakes will be better than what they were before and can stand up to track abuse. All right, guys. Smoking. Right guys, so basically I'm just gonna go ahead and fit this um, new forged oversized dump valve or recirculating valve. The one I got on at the moment is a 25 mil. This is a 40 mil, biggest as they get for recirculating valves. So I'm gonna change the old one out, put this new one on there. I've got a 40 to a 25 mil um, sort of like um, step pipe. Until I redo the intake and the boost pipes, this is gonna have to do, um, but this should help with controlling sort of the boost pressure in the vacuum. So Vince recommended to put this on um, because he's seen those 25 mil ones open up when they shouldn't open up and have a little bit of reliability issues, uh, especially around the sort of the level of vacuum that a VR6 can give us. She's done guys, she's plumbed in. The bottom hose wasn't quite long enough, but it's done enough. Um, it's on there all good, so I'm gonna give this a test and hopefully she'll behave a little bit better on and off boost. Just taking it for test drive now and it feels generally a lot smoother, um, sort of coming off the uh, throttle. It uh, sort of just a little bit smoother coming on off the throttle. Um, and when I boost it between gears. So not a huge difference, guys. I didn't really expect a massive difference. Uh, Vince itself basically said that there were the smaller, uh, sort of the 25 mil, you know, the ones that belong on the 1.8 turbos, you can't really flow enough air through the body. Um, and the suction of the VR6, the vacuum can be quite enough, quite a lot and enough to actually pull the valve up. Um, so that, you know, kind of when it's running on vacuum, it's also recirculated back into the into the turbo, into the intake. So with the bigger valve on there and the bigger, and it has a bigger spring on it anyway, that'll make sure that that valve is kept closed on idle and on vacuum situations. So it should just generally make it run a little bit better than it does. It's pretty smooth to be fair. So happy that that's all done. There's a direct fit, no faff at all. So um, yeah, all in all, a good little upgrade. All right guys, so I'm gonna end the video here. Initially, I wanted to add the build of, of the exhaust system in this video, um, but I had a bit of a catastrophic failure of the car, uh, which you'll see in the next video, um, or you might have seen in the shorts already. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. I really appreciate every subscriber I get and every single comment, it, you know, it makes my day. So please like and subscribe and I'll bring out the next video fairly soon so you guys can get up to date on what's happened to the car because we're a few weeks behind and then what the plan is going forward. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. I know you told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Cause you're trying